What's going on guys? My name is Zach and I'm here to review the Happy Time Murders. Now, let me just tell you something. I absolutely love this movie. I think it's one of the best puppet movies ever made. Rated R, hard R, rated R Muppet movie stuff. Love it, love it, love it. But this is called the Happy Time Murder. Okay, okay, okay. Listen to me right now. Stop it. This is- Oh, oh no! Sorry about that, guys. Let's get to the review. What's going on, guys? Welcome to a brand new movie review. Today, I'm discussing Happy Time Murders. As if you can't tell by my intro, my little puppet friend won't be joining me because he liked the film, and he had some good pros to it that I will discuss, but overall, I found this film to be very disappointing in its tone. And just a lot of other things to that, but we will get into that, but of course, Happy Time Murders is directed by Brian Henson, the son of Jim Henson, one of the famous creators of all these puppetry, and especially the Muppets. Of course, what is Happy Time Murders? If for some reason, you've escaped from seeing the trailer and haven't heard of this film, it's about a world where humans and puppets live and coincide, and it's about one detective named Phil Phillips, who also has a partner named Detective Edwards, played by Melissa McCarthy, and both of them embark on a journey after a bunch of puppets start dying. They have to figure out who's killing these puppets off and what's going on. From that concept, I remember when they announced this film like five years ago, I was so freaking excited for this film because I'm a big puppetry fan. I'm a big fan of the Muppets. I love puppetry. I think it's super cool. And I have to say, if you like seeing bloopers and like kind of behind the scenes for puppetry stay after the credits for the film because that's one of the best parts about the film is seeing how they actually did all the puppetry seeing all the different type of bloopers they put into it i thought that was really cool to see again i was really excited to see this film then i got a little hesitant when i saw melissa mccarthy got on board now i'm not the biggest fan of hers i think she's fantastic and spy i think she's great in bridesman but she's always doing the same shtick and she does the same shit in here, which again, kind of falters the film in a bit. I feel like there was other casts and other female performances that could have been put in this thing. I think Rachel McAdams would have been fantastic in this role. I think Tiffany Haddish put her in here would have been great as well. I think there's a ton of other actresses you could have easily inserted into this role and it would have made for a better, comfortable thing. And it wouldn't have just felt like another Melissa McCarthy comedy because that's what the film started out to be and it came out to be in the end. The big thing that did surprise me throughout this whole entire film is that Phil Phillips, the, one of the puppets, the blue puppet you see in the trailer is actually the main character of the film. I didn't expect that. From the trailers, it posed that Melissa McCarthy was going to be the main character, but overall, it is a puppet-centric film about Phil Phillips and his life. Melissa McCarthy's the sporting actress, and that is something unique, because I didn't think they were going to take that route, but they did, and I think that route helped this film marvelously. As the film opens up, you start to learn about Phil Phillips and his life and what he does, and you start to learn more about the puppets and whatnot, and I just, I wanted more of that. I wanted more of the world building because I think it's a cool little idea to have the puppets living coincide within humans and it's something like a Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Now, I'm not saying this is like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but it has that same concept where it's cartoons living with humans and I wanted more of that. And I think that's why I was so excited for this film years ago because I was... I love the concept. I think the concept's brilliant. I think you would get a, a director like Brian Henson on, someone who knows how puppetry works, and I think you have something in the gold mine right there. I can say here, I did laugh at parts. I did laugh. I didn't hate everything, but I think this is where I kind of dive into my cons. A lot of my cons reside into this film feeling like a just overextended SNL skit, which I hate saying that, and maybe that's a good or a bad thing. My audience was laughing, and I laughed at it too. I giggled, I chuckled, but I didn't laugh as hard as I wanted to. And my biggest thing with a comedy is, if I'm not entertained and I'm not laughing, then I'm going to start judging it for every other thing. That's where I kind of get into the story and the script. I felt like this film would have been way better if it was darker. I feel like it would have made for a darker comedy in a sense, kind of like the Nice Guys vibe. I think the Nice Guys vibe would have worked for this film and it would have made it 10 times better. Again, I think the script is another big issue for the film. And I think that's where all the issues really reside in because a lot of the humor just goes for that raunchy, R-rated, goofy humor. And I get it. That's what the trailers posted out to be. And I understood that. But seeing in its context, it just felt like it was that class clown in class going, oh my God, look at him. He He's funny. Look at him. Look at me. I'm being funny. Look at me. And that's what the whole film felt like. That's where I was kind of just disappointed overall because I felt like you didn't need that in the movie at all. And I didn't want that in the film. I didn't want to feel like it was just pointing at things. Look at this. I'm trying really hard to make you laugh. And yeah, sometimes that trying really hard did make me laugh. 
but overall it just overextended its welcome. Again, it just felt like an overextended SNL skit. Points me back into my same direction where I do think this film would have worked in a darker comedy route, like a dramedy. Again, I think if it had the same vibe as the nice guys, it would have worked on a better level. I think more clever humor with that raunchy humor mixed in there would have worked and would have worked seamlessly. No pun intended. And this film isn't one of the worst films I've seen this year, and it definitely is not one of the best. It overall is just a very big disappointment to me. I think that's where it comes into this route. I laughed. I chuckled. My audience was dying laughing. And maybe when you see this film, you're gonna die laughing too. But for me, I felt as if it could have just been better. And I think with everyone on board, this cast, the production, the idea, the concept is something that deserved better. With all that said, I'm gonna give Happy Time Murders a C minus. Curious to hear your guys' thoughts on Happy Time Murders. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let's talk about it down below in the comments. And are you gonna behave yourself now? No? You don't wanna talk now? No? It's all right. He's a pretty cool fellow, though. Of course, guys, if you guys are new here, hit up Sandwich on Films down below, because right down there you guys can get into advanced movie screens like this film, check out some movie news, and also some movie reviews. But guys, of course, until next time, stay classy and have a great rest of your day.